Hello, my name is Dr. Rory Murphy and I'm a neurosurgeon. First of all, sorry that you're having symptoms and problems in your neck and that we are considering a posterior cervical fusion. The most common reason to do a posterior cervical fusion is severe pressure on the spinal cord, tumors, or fractures. The good news is this, these are common problems that we deal with all the time and people can have very good results after surgery, but it is a challenge. Generally for the surgery, we'll go in the back of the neck, move the muscles to the side. We don't cut the muscles, we move them to the side, get access to the back, the muscle, the bones of the back of the neck, and then carefully put little pilot holes for screws. We'll then clean off and do laminectomies and take the pressure off the spinal cord or take the tumor out or remove the fracture fragments. After we've dealt with the neurological problem or the pressure on the spinal cord or nerves, we'll then place small titanium rods going down both sides or maybe three rods in the back of the neck to help stabilize the spine, put it back in alignment, and if there's a fracture there, we'll juice and realign and stabilize the fracture. We then close the wound carefully and we'll generally put stitches on the back of the neck. Every posterior cervical fusion is different. No one's symptoms or problem is the exact same. But in general, the surgery involves going into the operating room, being carefully put to sleep by the anesthesiologist, positioning you downwards with two little pins in the head to hold the head. You may experience some pain here postoperatively that generally goes away after a day or two. Operation times vary for a three level posterior or four level posterior fusion and decompression. It usually takes approximately two hours. For bigger surgeries, it can take longer. Recovery in the recovery room generally takes an hour to two hours, and then you'll go back to the normal floor or rarely, if you have a severe problem, to the ICU. Post-operative recovery after posterior cervical decompression and fusion can be initially very tough. The first few days, there is moderate to severe pain stretching the muscles. We carefully give muscle relaxants after the case, and during the operation, we put special local anesthetic in the muscles and tissue in the back of the neck to help improve and reduce that pain. You will need some low-dose opiates after surgery, but everyone's pain is different. After surgery, people generally stay in the hospital for two to five nights, depending on their preoperative symptoms and their medical conditions and their postoperative recovery. We generally will see you two to three weeks after surgery to assess your wound and six weeks postoperatively. For this period, you will be wearing a cervical collar. This collar is there to help prevent severe movements of your neck. It doesn't keep your neck together. I recommend that you wear the collar when you're out of bed and walking around. You do not need to wear the collar if you're sitting in a recliner in a comfortable position or in bed at nighttime. After six to eight weeks, we get x-rays. Make sure that the implants are well positioned and that the neck is healing well, and then we'll remove the collar. At this point, we start more aggressive physical therapy. In the first six weeks postoperatively, you will not damage yourself doing normal activities. Making coffee, making food, dressing yourself, and doing simple activities. But you do need to avoid heavy lifting. Anything more than 20 to 30 pounds or 20 to 30 kilograms. After we then see you again, six months post-operative with x-rays and one year post-operative with x-rays. Most of the recovery happens in the first six months. The first two or three weeks can be very tough as the muscles are swollen. People feel pretty, start to feel pretty good somewhere between the four and six week mark. And at six months, they generally are resuming all their normal activities. 
What are the risks of a posterior cervical decompression infusion? Unfortunately, the most common risk of posterior decompression infusion is of wound healing issues or muscle movement. We do a number of techniques to reduce this, including special using special sutures and meticulous multi-level closure, but it can happen, especially with people with high risk factors, including nicotine use, diabetes, or other medical conditions. Other risks include spinal fluid leak, nerve injury, a C5 pulver, which includes weakness of the shoulder from the nerve, generally the right-hand side. This often develops a number of days after surgery. Most people, it gets better over a number of weeks and months and can fully get better. In some people, unfortunately, it doesn't, and it may be permanent. This, thankfully, is very rare. Other risks include the implants loosening, the bones not fusing together, damage to arteries and veins and spinal cord, stroke, coma, and even possible death. Thankfully, serious complications are rare. The vast majority of people, once they get over the first two or three weeks, make a very good recovery. Thank you.